we got to the second problem. Let's start with determining the number of sig figs each of these starting numbers have. This has only one sig fig. The zeros in the end does not count. So ending zeros don't count unless you have a decimal point. And since we don't have a decimal point shown here, these zeros don't count. So there's only one significant figure in 200. 3.58 has three sig figs. One is less than three. That means our final answer would just have one sig fig. We're going to underline the first sig fig, which is seven. Take a look at the number next to it. That's a one. So we are not going to round the seven up. So this is just going to stay at the seven. And we're just going to add the two zeros until we get to the imaginary decimal point that is supposed to be there. Because 700 is way closer to 716 than seven is. Next one. This number just has one significant figures. Starting zeros, leading zeros, they will never count regardless if we have a decimal point or not. So we only have one sig fig here, and we have three sig figs here. So that means our final answer will only have one sig fig. The first sig fig in this problem, in this number, is just two, because again, the leading zeros do not count. This time, we also have a number that's less than five next to it, so that means we are not going to round that two up. So this is just going to stay at 0 .0 0 0.02. But let's say that this was a 6, then we would round this up 2 up to a 3, because 6 is greater than a 5. But in this case, this is going to be 0 0.02, keeping, leaving us a 1 sig fig. Next problem, here we have 4 sig figs. The sandwich zero, the zeros in the middle, they will always count. And here we also have 4 sig figs. So that means our final answer will just have 4 sig fig. Let's underline the fourth number. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's a 3. Look at the number next to it. Again, we're not going to round. So this is going to stay as 1, 3, 2, 3. Here we have two sig figs and two sig figs. So that means our final answer would just have two sig figs underlying the second sig fig, which is the 8. And we look at the number next to it. 8 is greater than 5. So that means we are going to round this 8 up. So this becomes 9.9. .9. Our final answer has two sig figs. And then the last problem, how many sig figs does 5,000 have? One sig fig. And that's because these are ending zeros and there's no decimal point. And then there's two sig figs here, so that means our final answer should just have one sig fig. Underlying the first sig figs, that's the 9. And the number next to it is a 0, so we're just going to keep that as a 9. We're not going to round up. And then we're just going to add a 0 to get us to the decimal point, because 9 is very different from 90.9, .9, .9, whereas 90 is much closer. And the zero, again, in the end, it doesn't count. So these zeros that we're adding in the end here, here, and here, they don't count because there's no decimal point there. Ending zeros will only count if there's a decimal point. So if we added a decimal point here, that's, there's three sig figs. But since we only want two sig figs in the final answer, we won't add that decimal point, making this last zero not count as a significant figure. And that's how you would do multiplication and division problems with significant figures taken into account. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.